Hey everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to take a look at some of the fun Easter finds that I have found at Dollar Tree. And this whole video is going to be inspired by Dollar Tree Easter crafts that we can do this year. So I am really excited to show you all of these ideas because I was pleasantly surprised with some of the things that I found. And I think everything's gonna turn out really cute plus super affordable, which I know we all love. So go ahead and give this a thumbs up if you are ready to start getting inspired with Dollar Tree Easter crafts. And we'll start with our first craft. So actually, truth be told, I found these last year. These are little wooden bunny shapes and they're really, really nice, really thick. They come in just the bare wood, but I did apply just one layer of chuck paint over the front. And the reason I did one layer is because I wanted it to kind of have a little bit more of a white washed look to it, but you can go ahead and make that decision based on what your personal preference is. So I went ahead and applied the chalk paint. I'll link my favorite down below. And I have had these so long that I just was uninspired with how to use them. I actually have six and my original idea was to have a little Easter sign. So E A S T E R. And my sixth one I have set aside because that's going to be in next week's video. I'm inspired to use it in a different way. So check out next week's video when that comes out and you'll see some additional inspiration for these cuties. So for this, one today, I thought these would make really cute little gifts and we're going to apply some ribbon as a little hanger and then some adhesive vinyl as well. So I am not only really excited that these were super affordable, but also I'm excited that they're finally going to be out of my craft room because these have been taking up quite a bit of space as you can see. And I had another one as well. So I'm excited that these can be gifted. All right, let's go ahead and bring in our adhesive vinyl. I decided on a really nice gray. And as always, I will link the font information that I used to bring this together. So I simply typed out happy Easter and I like to pair a nice more block solid font with a script font. I think it just looks so nice and pairs so well. So I'll link these two fonts down below. I think they look really cute together. Okay, I thought this gray was really nice and soft and I'm going to bring in a nice pink ribbon for when we attach that for a little hanger. So I'm hoping these turn out because I think in my head they're going to be super, super cute. All right, I'm gonna get all of the little middles Sorry for the background heater. It was spring. It felt very, very spring. We had a couple days where we were in short sleeves and at one point it reached almost 80 degrees. And now we are the complete opposite and we are so chilly again. So it's a little bit of a bummer because we have blooming trees and signs of spring everywhere. And now it's just so, so cold. Okay, so we have these done and I'll go ahead and do the remaining three so that we can get these applied. So yes, the hoodies are back on and the heater's back on and whew, we're just trying to keep warm. Hopefully spring comes soon enough. So what I am going to do is just simply place this little happy Easter on each one of these little bunnies. I thought that'd be really cute and then we'll apply the ribbon. And I'll try my best to use the same piece of transfer tape for all of these, but I will say that when I'm working with wood or a painted surface, I find that my transfer tape gets really filmy really quickly. And so I can use it quite a few times, but I will say that it doesn't last as long as it would say working with glass or something that's not as porous, especially if you have paint. Well, actually, I don't wanna say especially if you have paint because I think bare wood too, it kind of just leaves a little bit of a dusty film on, on the transfer tape, but we'll see how long we can get out of this transfer tape. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my design. There we go. I'll do this little one first. And I think that looks so cute. The sizing is so good. Let me make sure that, that, it, <laughs> that it's straight though. Keep nudging it. And I think there. Okay, so I'm going to burnish that down. 
and then really slowly remove the transfer tape. Okay, so there is number one. I'll go ahead and do one more for you and then I'll go ahead and finish the rest on my own. So with my scraper, I'm just gonna burnish the top and then I like to turn it over and also repeat that step on the back. It just really helps reinforce that pressure so that this next step of peeling off the liner goes a lot more smooth. Okay, there we go. And we'll get this next one on. Okay, there we go. So yes, originally I wanted to, I bought six. And again, only five here because we'll go ahead and craft with the six one next week. But originally I thought it'd be so cute to paint these just as I did, but then have a different color for each letter spelling out Easter. And you could do a variety of things. I guess you could kind of hang it in like a garland style. I think that would be so pretty, though heavy. I guess these aren't overly heavy, but it would kind of get a little heavy. I was also going to kind of um, attach them to a wood sign, but again, just the weight of it, I wasn't too sure. But in the end, I'm really thinking that this is the best little option because not only does um, finally provide some inspiration, but it also is going to help me gift these to other people, which I love to do. So use that transfer tape five times. So that's amazing. And then I have this liner that I used for, or I had this liner from when I pulled it off from my transfer tape. So I'm just going to place it right back on there and then I'll see how many more times I can get a little bit of life out of that. Okay, so here we go. Now let's bring the ribbon in. And I have this, I think this is from, yes, so this is, celebrate is Michael's. So I have this ribbon and I thought it'd be really cute to attach one little end to each little ear and do a little loop. Wouldn't that be cute? I think that will be really fun. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let me decide on a length and let's pray I have enough ribbon because is there anything worse than finally getting to your craft table and then not being able to finish a craft? <laughs> For me, that gets so frustrating, so frustrating because, you know, sometimes I feel like I don't have as much time to craft. And so when I finally get to sit down, I want to accomplish, right? I think we all feel that way. Okay, so for reference, I measured these at seven and a half on the dot, seven and a half inches. So let's go ahead and cut the remaining two. In fact, I am working on a project for next week's video and I ran out of iron on, so I had to quickly, had to quickly get a little order for Michael's done and I'll pick that up hopefully today. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in my little staple tool and let's organize our little system here. So what I'm gonna do is turn this over, pardon the, I'm gonna have to dedicate some time to the, the label on the back. Okay, so I'm thinking something like that. These would be really cute to hang on a little doorknob. I think that'd be really cute. So I'm kind of keeping that in mind for how much room to allow. Okay, so it's a little bit more than a half an inch and I'm just going to staple And I'm gonna make sure that that, yep, it worked. It worked really well. Okay, and then I'll do the same for this side. Let's staple. Oop, I might be out of staples. I was just wondering about that too. Oh, no, nope, there it is. Nope, user error, hold on. Let's see if we can do that again. There we go. Okay. 
perfect. I think that's really cute. I like how that looks. Okay, let me finish up the last four. We'll be all done. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and five. I think those turned out really cute. And they're not going to be sitting patiently waiting for me to be inspired in my craft room any longer. So I am excited that that is complete. And I hope that inspired you with a fun little small and affordable gift that you could give this Easter. All right, let's go ahead. I'm gonna tuck these away. I'm going to spend some time in front of my favorite show later, getting all of those little pieces off the back and let's move on to our next craft for the next craft I found these really nice small totes at Dollar Tree and I picked up three of them and I thought it would be fun to just create some little Easter egg hunt tote bags for this year's egg hunt. So what I did is I will link the SVG that I use. These two are identical, but just different color. And then I have more of a boy one for this one. So I will link them down below. And then what I did was just added their little monogram to the little bottom. Now I did a video, um, actually pretty recently about lots of Cricut blanks that I found or craft supplies in general that I found at Dollar Tree that I think are definitely worth it. And these were one of the items that I was talking about. Now I will say they are kind of thin, but bear in mind, it's a dollar and a quarter. I mean, it's Dollar Tree. So I think that they work good for things like doing a little gift bag or things like an Easter egg hunt, stuff like that. But I do think that they are really, really great for certain things things. So the size is just perfect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my heat press. I'm going to preheat the tote bag just to make sure it is nice and wrinkle free, but also to ensure that all of the moisture comes out of the garment. And then what I'm going to do is lint roll it and place my design and then press. So I'm going to get all three of these done and this will be another craft done inspired by Dollar Tree finds. Okay, these turned out way, way too cute. And I love just the softness of this little cream bag. It's just so Eastery and fun. I love this. So I like to go ahead and place my whole bag or shirt, whatever I am doing on a really cool surface and allow that heat to dry out. And then once this is completely cool, then I go ahead and remove that liner and it's easy peasy. But these turned out so cute. And I think these are perfect for an Easter egg hunt. So. Check out the Dollar Tree because if you find these, they are definitely worth picking up. Okay, so I also really like to be inspired with decor that doesn't have words on it. So what I'm going to do for this little craft is I found this little, it kind of just looks like a little burlap little piece and it's so cute. 
and they had it in a couple colors. Um, I can't remember exactly what, but these are just so nice. Now I will say I did apply one layer of chalk paint, not because of the color. It was white when I purchased it, but it just had a mark on it. So sometimes you just have to, um, you know, fancy it up a little bit. Sometimes they get little marks on them just from sitting on the shelves, but you just have to look at things and see their potential. So that's why I always have chalk paint on hand because it takes me just a few moments and then brand new again. Okay, so I also found this at Dollar Tree as well. They are just cute little bunnies. I thought they were really adorable. They're little wooden bunnies with little pom-pom on their little tush. And what I'm going to do is I think, I like to work in odd numbers, so I'm going to do three and I'm going to just do them in this little right bottom corner here. And I think that this is a fun little piece of decor for Easter. And again, inspiring with things that don't have words on them. Sometimes it's nice just to skip all of the, the wording. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot, bringing that down a little bit. That's working for my eye. So I'm gonna start with the one on the way right. And then once I have that placed, then I'll be able to get the others aligned just right. So I'm gonna just use hot glue. I love hot glue. Works for me, but use the adhesive of your choice. So I'm going to place this one right there. This is so cute and simple. It's just so simple. And by the time you put these two things together, again, I found a little pack of bunnies and then this little sign. I think this actually looks pretty darn cute. I think it's super fun. All right, the second one, go right here. Make sure it lines up at the bottom. And then this is where you'll decide on how much spacing you want between so that we can replicate that spacing with the third. Okay. This definitely looks like something that I would pick up at Target. <laughs> it's so cute. I love it. And I love the natural wood of the bunnies paired with the white little faux shiplap sign. I think that's just very visually pleasing and just really fresh looking. Okay, and I think that that actually lined up super well. So I'll press that down. And in a matter of minutes, it would have even taken even shorter if I wasn't, you know, explaining the process, but in a matter of minutes, you have a really cute little piece of decor that's super simple. Now, let me tell you, oh, there's 12. I was gonna say, how many do we have? So you could create four of these little signs. How cute. So if you like this idea, make sure that you pick up four signs because you'll have enough bunnies to make this in multiples. So I love this idea, it's super cute. In fact, I might actually do that. I might go back and get a couple more of these signs because now I have a lot of extras. Let me know also what you would do with these cute little bunnies with the little cottontails. They are so sweet and I actually think they'd also look really cute on the front of a card. That would be so fun. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to our next craft, but I am totally thrilled with how that turned out. Okay, I also found these really cute fabric gift bags. They come in a pack of four. They're so cute. And then they're shaped so that the top of the little bag has little ears. So let's bring these out. They also include the little twine that goes around. And here's our little bag. Isn't that fun? So I thought this would really be fun for gift giving. These could be fun teacher gifts. These could be fun neighbor gifts, but I'm going to go ahead. What I did is I will of course link the font information down below, but I went and whoops, I typed out some names here and I thought we could do a little gift giving and just fill these with some Easter candy. And this would be a really fun little gift. So I'm going to go ahead and start weeding. And I'm gonna go very slow because it's a nice, delicate font. So I'm gonna take my time and make sure that I'm not accidentally ripping it or bringing up anything that needs to stay down. Okay, these would also make really cute coworker gifts. And if you have for kiddos, you know, there's always people to gift give to, especially if you have kiddos in extracurricular activities and they have coaches or, you know, music teachers, things like that. 
it's just a wonderful little way to give a little something nice for Easter or any holiday. So I love the idea of these little, little bags. These are so cute. So spring too. So I thought they were just adorable. And as always, when you are using iron on, don't forget to mirror your image. That way they get cut out in the right direction. Okay. Last of the little middle pieces and then I'll be good to go. This is my favorite font. I use this for everything. I rarely find a font that works all the time and this font for me, it just does. Every word that you spell with it or name just looks so pretty. So make sure you have all of the little scraps off of your liner because anything that's on here at this point, once the heat is applied, will be transferred. So you wanna make sure all the little scraps are all off. Okay, I'm gonna cut these apart like this and then I'm going to do the exact same process how cute is that gonna be for let's see what did we do earlier oh the little tote bags so I'm gonna go over preheat my material make sure there's no moisture flatten out any wrinkles these are actually pretty darn perfect right out of the bag and then what I'll do is press these on and then I'll place them on a cool surface just to make sure that it draws out the heat. I wanna make sure it's nice and cool before I peel off the liner. So let's go ahead and get these done. Now, let's see if the little dot to the eye and the little dot after the little period after miss actually survives. I'm not sure, those are teeny tiny, but regardless, this is gonna be super cute. Okay, now I'm just letting these cool for a moment, but I wanted to mention the reason why I was kind of mindful about placing them a little bit down is because once you tie them, you're, if you have them too far up there, the name is just kind of gonna get smushed and get kind of crooked and you probably won't be able to read it. So make sure you place them down. Now I'm not going to fill these and tie them in front of you because I don't have the candy yet, but these are gonna be super, super cute. So let me go ahead and now that they're cool, I'll peel that off. Ooh, okay, so far we have the dot to the eye and the little period. Ooh. And that dot to the eye is good. Teeny tiny. <laughs> and those peel off great. Now, they were a little bit, I have to mention this, at the pre-press. Um, I thought that they kind of smelled a little... Um, they just had a fragrance to them, right? I don't know if it's the material or something. So I just noted that they kind of had a little... Um, just kind of, I don't know, fabric-y smell to them, if that makes sense, I'm not sure. But I'm just letting you know. It always reminds me to tell you that you just need to monitor the project in front of you. Go ahead and make sure that you're always checking it to make, make sure you're not pressing too long or if you need a little bit of additional heat. But I think these turned out super cute and I'm gonna set these to the side until I get the candy. And then these will be really fun little Easter treat bags that were found at Dollar Tree. Okay, I found this beautiful long sign at Dollar Tree and I love these for the inside of my front door just because it's a nice long space to decorate and I think this just works perfectly. I love the little bunny cutout. I thought it was so cute. You could take this a step further and apply some paint if you wanted to add some color. I'm actually really fond of this really neutral and soft wood color. So it's just right up my style alley and my decor alley. So I'm going to leave this as is is but I went ahead and found a really fun SVG I'll link it down below in case you would like to be inspired to recreate this and let me begin getting this all weeded out so I did take a couple things off of this design I think there was a carrot that I removed um, and you can always you know just contour out any parts of the image that you would want to remove for your project so that's why you'll see some additional little things in the link that I'm gonna put below. Super, super cute. I just, I didn't um, 
really want the carrot in mine. Okay, so this is going to say Easter Bunny Stop Here. Isn't that cute? And the bottom is pretty delicate, so I'm gonna take my time and make sure all those little pieces stay down. Okay, that looks really good. Okay, now that I have that done, I'm going to turn this a little bit and let's get all those little middle pieces. Here we go. Okay. Finishing up the last couple pieces. There we go. I love using this vinyl because of the blue backer. I, it's just a genius move and it's so, such a simple move on a vinyl company to do this. I love it because it makes weeding so much easier when there's contrast like this. And then here has a really fun little font. And of course, I don't know font information because this is a pre-made SVG, but I love how this has little inside pieces just to make it super, super fun. All right, now we have our cute little design. And I think it's so cute because I love the little bunny cutout at the top. So I think it's just a really fitting little sign and so appropriate. Okay, and I actually purchased my new craft mat for card making, but I will tell you, I absolutely love it for doing vinyl as well because it's magnetic. So I can just grab my little magnets and position my vinyl down. I do this because I don't like keeping things on my cutting mat. A lot of people say, Bethany, keep your vinyl on your cutting mat and do all of your weeding and then apply your transfer tape all on the mat because then it lays flat and sticks. I purposely avoid doing that because I think that the more that you use your mat in that way, the more you are going to get oils from your fingers onto your mat or dust from the air. Just those are things that are going to reduce the longevity of your mat. So you can absolutely do it, but those are just things that I think about. So I simply use my Cricut cutting mats only for cutting. And then once I'm done with them, I cover them up and store them. That way, I honestly, I don't buy cutting mats a lot, if at all, because I, I just really, really am aware of keeping them super, super clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take away about an inch of that transfer tape, lay this down, okay? And then when doing that, you create a little lip. And this is just easier than having a full sheet of sticky because it makes it a little bit more manageable. So now I'm just, I'm just having to lay down line by line. Oop, I totally miss, oh, I misaligned that by a lot. Oh my goodness gracious. But if you do this, watch, I'll show you a little trick. I don't even know how I could have done that that badly. Okay, so I am going to mend this right over here. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this extra transfer tape and I'm gonna overlap it and do that. That way it's all connected, so no problem. <laughs> And when you do yours, do yours a little straighter. Okay, so now I'm going to press this down. Just like that. And turn it all the way over. Now it's really stuck on my mat here. Okay. And we'll do this too. Right on the back side, just like we did earlier. This just really helps, I think. Okay, I am going to bring in my sign. In fact, I'm gonna do it this way because I think for me, that is going to be much easier. So let me see if I can get it all on camera. Well, I won't, I won't get the bunny, but that's okay because I'm not applying vinyl there anyway. Okay, so let's remove the liner. And there's our design. Perfect. Okay, now let's straighten this out. I can just center this. Let's bring this down a little bit so you can see all of it. Center this the best 
that I can. And actually that looks, shut my brain down just a hair and over just a hair. Okay, I think, I think that looks good. Okay, so I'm going to lay that down. The crooked grid lines are throwing my eye off, but I think in the end that's going to be straight. Okay, let me turn it this way because now that I have it aligned and laid down, I can just turn it and work a little easier. Okay, then peel off my transfer tape. So cute. Oh, let's try to save this too. That way I can reuse it. So let's see. I want this to rip. There we go. How cute is that? Easter Bunny stop here. Kind of hard to fit the whole thing within frame, but I think that's so cute. I love that. So fun and so simple. Okay, I found this really nice mug at Dollar Tree and I loved the color. It just reminded me of spring and Easter time. It's just so, so pretty. So I'm going to put a little design on there. In fact, I think I, yep, I stuck my design right inside so I wouldn't lose it. And before I do anything, I am going to apply a little bit of rubbing alcohol to the surface of my mug and that will remove any fingerprints, any oils, any dust that may be accumulated from either sitting in your craft room or sitting on the store shelf that gets it all ready so that it can receive that vinyl really nicely. Okay, I'm gonna set this to the side and bring my design in. Now, I've used this design before because I love it. Uh, let's see, what did I do? I did a tote bag for church in, was it my last video? I'll link that video. It was a fun one. Oh, I did a craft haul in that video. That's what it was. It was super fun. I shared a craft haul for spring and what things I have found to bring into my craft room for springtime. And then we crafted a little bit. So I'm just going to lead this out and take my time. The bottom is tiny. Okay, there we go. I love this SVG. I love this so much. I want to put this on everything. I want to make a t-shirt. I want to do all the things. This would be also so cute on a navy baseball cap. So I'm probably going to have to just keep reusing this. And that is one of the most beautiful things about SVGs is that you can put them on anything and everything. So if you wanted to make a mug, a t-shirt, a ball cap, a tote bag, anything you want. It's so fun because you can just keep recreating and having fun with it. So I find that really inspiring. I'm going to trim this down just a little bit and let's grab our transfer tape. And I'm going to bring my transfer tape in from that first craft where we did all of those little bunnies because I think I'll still have some stick left for this. So loving this mug already. We have to remember what Easter is all about, right? Without Jesus, there wouldn't be Easter. And I am very much team Jesus. Okay, let's scrape that down really well. And the back. Now, vinyl is not food safe, so when you are putting your design down, you wanna give enough room for the person to sip their beverage out of without their lip coming into contact with the vinyl. So just give a little bit of room and just about that much is going to be perfect. So let me get my design right off of my transfer tape. Again, I like to turn mine over and peel the liner away. Just find that works better. And then I will just line this up how I'd like it. Isn't that cute? I love that. Let's make sure though. Okay. There we go. Okay, I like to start in the middle, just kind of press and then press out. There we go. And then I'll just reinforce that pressure with a scraper. Now, if you're giving this to somebody, you'll want to remind them that 
they're going to want to avoid the microwave and avoid the dishwasher. So this will be something that you would want to hand wash only and don't leave it soaking in water. Those are things that are gonna help the mug last a little bit longer and the, the vinyl more specifically on the mug last longer. Removing that transfer tape and there we go. How fun. That's such a beautiful design. It was so well done. I love this. Okay, I'm probably gonna be using this design a million more times in some crafts because it's just too good. And the message is just too good. Okay, you know I love this frame. If you are a longtime watcher of my channel, I found these frames at Dollar Tree. You just have to ignore the little sentiment inside because it has potential to be amazing for every season of the year. And I think I'm proving that. I think I have used this for almost every season of the year because I picked up so many of these. So these are awesome. What you're going to do is just flip them over. You are going to bring these little prongs up and then you have your little inside piece. Then you're going to measure that five by five. And then I just have a piece of 80 pound cardstock here. I am going to trim that down to, let's straighten that out a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna trim that to five inches by five inches, keeping my scraps. Absolutely use those for card making. And then this should nestle in just perfectly turn this over and then you have a brand new blank slate to create with this is one of my favorite Dollar Tree finds I think that that fresh white frame with the wooden beads is just perfect I think it's so nice to craft with so now that I have my paper in there and that little backer back in I'm going to put those prongs back down and then look fresh slate and it's going to be so fun to craft with Okay, let's set some things to the side. I'm gonna bring this mat in because I cut a cute little design, once again, linking it down below. And there is a little, cute little bunny with some little florals, so fun. But some of the pieces, all of the pieces that you see out came off on my mat, which is wonderful, because then I could just clean my mat off. But some of them are still stuck in there. So I like to take this little foam mat and just my little, picker tool here and I will just pop those little pieces out. So anything that remained, this is just an easy way to get those out just like that. And a couple more just like that. Okay. I will link this cardstock down below. This is 80 pound, which I think is pretty good for this project. So super cute. All right. I think we're good. So now I did like a baby pink almost, more of a petal pink with more of, uh, and these aren't the official terms, right? Or the official names of these colors, but kind of like a watermelon pink. And then I thought it'd be cute to have those one on top of the other. And then we could put it in this little frame. I thought it'd be so fun. So what I'm gonna do is I think, I think I'm going to try doing some foam tape I think that would be cute, although it's going to be really kind of hard because these are tiny little pieces. So should I just save the time and glue it? Because that is equally as cute. I think for the good of the order and the good of time, you could absolutely use foam tape. In fact, I have really skinny little foam tape from Waffle Flower Crafts, and I will link this down below. You would probably need to trim it. Well, no, these little strips at the end would be just fine, but I think I'm gonna save myself the time and maybe the uh, stress and not do that. I'm going to do liquid glue instead, but just know that you could add additional dimension by doing so. What I will do though, is I will add some foam tape to the back of my final bunny and then we will have a little dimension there. But I think it's going to look just equally as cute, just glued on top. So I'm gonna make that call for mine, but if you'd like to add the foam tape for this, just enjoy it in front of Gilmore Girls. Do something fun and then get that fun task done, right? Okay, so I think that is just about good. That's what I always do. I always say things that are kind of tedious, put Gilmore Girls on. It's just the best show and it makes makes crafting 
so fun, especially when you have more of a time consuming project. I always call my really long cards Gilmore Girl cards because that's something you'll want to enjoy with Gilmore Girls. Okay, now I'm going to take my tweezers. This will just be easier. Oop, don't get it on my, there we go. Easier on your fingers for lining up just like this. And the liquid glue will give you just a little bit of wiggle time. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to make a card with this file. That is so cute. I'm gonna have to make a card with this file. So watch out for that. That's gonna be super fun. And this was done on my Cricut. So for those of you who've been wanting me to do a card with my Cricut machine, this, this is going to be a really fun one to do. I really do prefer though, I don't prefer card making on the Cricut. I think it's really time consuming um, just because you have to do all the designing and cutting and um, though it does, I do agree that it does save a little bit of money because stamps and dies can be pretty expensive. Okay, there we go. I think that looks so cute. Now I'm going to grab these foam squares and I'm gonna place them all over this little bunny. And I'm gonna be mindful to cut some down to get you know, that little ear too, especially on the ends of places because we don't want that to bend down. So we'll do this. And then what we'll do is let me find my, these are my anti-stick tool or anti-stick. Um, These are my, what do they call them? Non-stick, there we go. Non-stick scissors, but there we go. We'll do just that and save those little halves for the top and bottom. Okay, so now here is my little weeding tool back in action. It's a really good way to get the liners of your foam tape off. This was actually an idea given to me by many of you. And thank you because it really does make it so easy. Okay, I'm gonna bring the tweezers back in. Now, again, you could cut out some adhesive vinyl and you could add, you know, a little text that says Happy Easter or anything you'd like. But I did wanna provide another example of some decor that you could make that doesn't have words, right? So I think there looks good. I'm gonna press that down. You know what, I think gluing the paper to the paper was a really, really fine call because then when you add the dimension with the foam tape to the final piece, you still get the dimension, but you saved some time with um, not doing all that tedious work. But you absolutely could, and in fact, I would love to see it because I think it'd be pretty. Now, if you made this on a bigger scale, like say you had an eight by eight frame or something even bigger, then your bunny would be bigger and you'd have a lot more room to do the foam tape and it probably wouldn't be as hard of a task. But that was a little too intimidating and time consuming for me. So I went this route and I think it's equally as stunning. It's so cute and simple and again, no words on it. So I really, really like to inspire in that way as well. Okay, I also found this really nice egg shaped sign and this is so fun because it gives us a big space to use and to decorate with. So I found this and I instantly picked it up. Now I will say I did come home and put some layers of chalk paint on it because it was kind of, it was, it was white but it was kind of a gray white and a little bit whitewash and I just really wanted something really, really fresh. So I did apply a couple layers of chalk paint. So again, check the description box out because I'll link my favorite down there, but also anything that you saw me use in this video, the supplies that I use, things like that will all be down there. So be sure to check that out if you want to take a closer look at anything that I'm using. Okay, I am going to keep my magnets on hand and let's see, put my tweezers away. I'm going to begin weeding this out. Now this is going to be, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I saw this design and it it was just way too pretty to not include in, in Easter decor this year. Though it's pretty delicate, so I just had a whoopsie right here, but I think I can mend it a little bit later. 
So I'm just going to need to take my time, go slow, and it's going to be totally worth it because it's so pretty. Okay, finally done. Isn't this pretty? And I'll grab all of my little weeded out pieces off the side. Sometimes I like to just put them on the side and then just trim them off. Just like that. Helps me have a little area to do so and then I can say bye-bye. <laughs> Super easy. Okay, I thought this was so soft, so pretty, and I just really loved the look of this. So I'm gonna get some transfer tape and we'll lay this all down. Okay, so that is a perfect size. I'm going to do that same method where I just peel up about an inch of that transfer tape and then I'll just fold over that little piece of liner on the back. That just helps. And let's see if we can get this straight this time. All right. <laughs> I don't think I have ever in all of the Cricut crafts I've done applied my transfer tape as crooked as I did earlier with that vertical sign. That was, that was really, really adorable. Okay, there we go. So I have a little tiny bubble here, which I'll remedy just like that. And bring our scraper in, scrape the front and back. Okay, now just as equally as you are patient and careful with the delicate nature of this SVG when weeding, you wanna still be equally patient <laughs> for this part when you're peeling it up. Okay, just make sure all of those little pieces don't get ripped. And take your time. There we go. Sometimes you have to nudge them down a little bit, encourage them to stay. And there we go. Okay. Now, let's bring this more into the middle. Okay, I think that looks good. So I'm gonna let that lay down. Yeah, I think that looks good. Press that down and we'll just reinforce that pressure with the scraper once more. Okay. Now I will say also the original paint and or original how it came from the store, it was pretty um, groovy. <laughs> and I hope that that even makes sense because what I'm trying to say is the wood was not smooth. It was super bumpy. You could kind of see the faux wood grain in there. So applying the couple layers of chalk paint actually helped kind of smooth that out, which I really like that look a little bit better. Okay. Plus it makes it so easy for applying the vinyl. So just another tip, if you are, you know, wanting to do this, then maybe pick up some chalk paint just to kind of help remedy that. Okay, there we go, happy Easter. Now, I think as is, it's a little kind of plain. And I think that there's also, I, I love a little bit of white space, right? But I think that it needs something here. So what I thought, they do have um, ribbon at Dollar Tree. However, I have some ribbon in my craft stash that I thought was perfect for this. So I am going to bring this in and let's make a fun little bow for the top. So I do wanna inspire you with what I found at Dollar Tree. They have so much ribbon. There was this really pretty kind of turquoise ribbon there that's so nice. And I originally picked it up for this project, but in the end, when I saw this in my stash, it, this is just a little bit more me for this project. Plus this is so neutral and nice, and I think bringing in a little bit of a pattern will be really nice. Now this is a little bit more summery, but I could not leave this at Dollar Tree. Isn't that honeycomb just so fun? So I'm gonna set this aside for some summer crafting because I thought that that was super fun. But there are ribbon options at Dollar Tree pretty much always, at least at mine, they always have really nice ribbon options and you can pick some up there. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna decide on the size of my bow and I will make this in front of you. That way you can get an idea of um, how to do this. Now there's so many ways to make bows, so many ways. I'm sure there's a million tutorials too, but I do this because this is the way that I like 
naturally, right? We're always going to do the way that makes sense to us or gives us the results that we want. But go ahead and do this part however you like. So my final measurement was 16 inches. Wow, I'm getting some precise measurements today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that twice. I'm going to do 16 inches two times. Okay, and then I'm going to do another at... I'm going to be generous to give myself enough and I'm going to do five inches. Okay. So 16 inches, 16 inches, five inches. Now you're going to keep some hot glue on hand. So I'm going to bring that in, clean up my craft space a little bit here. That way we have enough room. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to the side for a bit. I'm going to take my longer pieces, and I am going to fold. It doesn't need to be precise on where you fold. You're just going to place a little bit of hot glue right at the edge of for the first one and then bring your other end and glue that together. Now, they do have those little silicone finger protectors at Dollar Tree. In fact, I have some, but you know what? I feel like years of crafting have, I don't know, made me a little bit or maybe made my thumbs a little bit durable with hot glue. Although every, one, every once in a while, I sure get a zinger and whew, not fun. So always be careful with your hot glue and use some finger protectors if you need to. But I'm going to repeat that step just like this. Okay. And you're just going to glue those pieces together. Okay. So now, and it dries so fast, so this makes very, very quick project. Now you have two little loops, right? Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place those one on top of the other and let's do this. I'm going to move this for a second. We'll bring you back in in just a moment. Now I'm going to make sure that the glue end is obviously face down. We don't want to see that, right? And preferably more in the middle. Okay. That way we're going to hide it. We're going to hide it at the end. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these one on top of the next. I am going to take this piece. I'm going to add a strip of glue. Let's see how I want to do this. Mm, kind of want a substantial piece. Well, I'll do, I'm going to add a strip of glue here and I'm just going to fold this in on itself a third of the way in. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this side. And this is just going to help the next step be more manageable. I used to not do this step. And so it's doable without gluing this, but it just makes you feel like you want to have five more hands, right? It just makes it a little harder. But if you have just a nice flat piece like this and not having to fold as you're turning and gluing for this next step, it's a little bit easier. So I recommend this part. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to pinch my bow just like this. And you don't have to worry about what it looks like right now, right? You're just pinching it in the middle. And what we're going to do is we are going to take this little piece and we're going to wrap it and glue it around. So what I'm going to do is turn this keep this pinch. Now this is kind of our messy side. We have our cuts here and I'm going to apply a little bit of glue. And I, I think hot glue is a perfect choice for this project. I have made bows with hot glue for so long. And in fact, there was a time when I was actually tired of the wood sign, but I loved the bow and I wanted to take the bow off the sign. It took me longer than I care to admit to get that bow off. So I, I'm just telling you there is a testament to the hot glue. The hot glue, it really works. So nice. Okay, and then I'm just going to fold that over on itself. Now I have quite a bit of a tail, so really you could have gotten away with doing this at about four inches, but I like to have a little bit more than I need just so that I'm not, I don't know, it just makes it easier. I'm gonna cut that remaining piece off without cutting my bow there. Okay, now, when you turn this over, now you have a fun little bow and there's so many ways you could style this. So this is where you start fluffing. Get this charging. Okay. So we're going to fluff like this 
and we have a cute little bow. So, so many ways to style this. You could fluff and have the back pieces kind of lay flat. You could also take those pieces and kind of tilt them down. And this is where having a wired ribbon is going to be super helpful. So what I mean by wired ribbon is they place a little wire right along the edges of the ribbon and it's kind of sewn into this little um, edge piece and it makes for shaping things so easy but what I like is I like this look I think that's so cute so again two different looks you can go for and if you only wanted to do one layer you can do that too if you didn't want the two layers but I like something a little bit more dimensional I think it's super super pretty and then we have a fun little bow for the top of our little Easter egg so I think I'm going to position it so that it kind of covers this little um opening here I think that that will look super nice plus I think visually that also looks really nice as well you could bring it down a little bit too it doesn't hurt anything okay so I'm just gonna apply hot glue again it really is more durable than you think I promise I also you you can always switch this out if you wanted something a little bit different I actually really like that look I, I think it's really pretty so I always keep it so I'm gonna add my hot glue right to the middle part there and I'm gonna position it just below, because I like how that looks. Okay, just like that. And now, what you can also do is if you wanted to shape this and have things stay, is you can add just a dot of hot glue to your wood so that when you are you know, shaping it and placing it, then this doesn't move. Once you glue it down, it's there. So I'm just gonna add a dot there that way. Once I have it kind of visually how I like it and want to see it, it stays put. Okay, and then you can just continue fluffing. And I really love how that looks. It's so fun. Okay, so there is another Dollar Tree inspired Easter craft. So cute. And I think I have one more. So let's finish up this video with one more little idea for Easter this year. And then we'll be all done. For our final craft this evening, I found these really cute little name tags, if you will. Let's see if they have a special name. I don't know. I just kind of think they're, oh, it's, they call it a ceramic plaque, but I like these for parties and things like that. So on the back, it shows that you can use a marker or a paint pen to customize your plaque, but have a Cricut, we'll use vinyl. So I am going to go ahead and use my rubbing alcohol and just spray down the surface. Also, of course you could use a pen, but you know what? I just think that some of the fonts are so much prettier than my own handwriting that I just, I love that. And you know what you can do is you can absolutely remove your vinyl once you're done. Even if you have permanent vinyl, permanent vinyl, you know, it truly isn't permanent. And I use it all the time and I remove it all the time. So you can absolutely remove it after you're done with your little party. Okay, so what I thought would be fun is if you're having Easter brunch, you had little name tags for all of your little items that you're placing out for brunch. So I have a nice gray vinyl. I thought that was nice and soft. I think it pairs well with this kind of off-white cream color. And what I'm going to do is, again, font information will be linked down below, but I'm going to weed out my little names here and try not to get too hungry because all of this sounds delicious right now. Okay little dot to my eye wants to come up so I'm just going to nudge that down with my weeding tool and hopefully keep it down there we go okay so we have quiche muffins ham of course you are going to write whatever you are serving right but I thought this was a really fun idea and again once your holiday is over you can remove the vinyl and then you could do this again for Christmas. You could do this again for Thanksgiving, things like that. So I will say some of them are imperfect, just like anything in life is gonna be imperfect, right? There's one little deep scratch on this. So I thought, oh, I'll just turn it over. Well, I mean, what are the odds? All right on both sides. So that's okay. You know what? It doesn't have to be perfect, but if you want to, um, you know, just kind of look and make sure you don't have too many imperfections on yours especially if it's going to interfere with your vinyl laying down. 
All right, little middles, and then I'll grab vinyl transfer tape, and we'll get these laid down. I think this is so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna reuse that transfer tape. We've done it the whole time here. I'm gonna reuse it. We've been doing it on the bunnies and the mug. And let's finish up here. And this is where I'm going to finish up with this transfer tape. I'll toss it after this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply it over all three and then I'll cut them apart next. So I'm going to press down. Just makes it easier when you can do all the steps together, I think. And when you've reused the transfer tape, gosh, are we on our seventh run? And you feel less guilty about trimming it apart and throwing it away when you're done. Okay, let me grab my scissors and I'm going to trim these apart, being mindful not to trim my vinyl. Now to get all of your names with the exact same size, now I don't know what size this is. I size visually in design space, so what that means is I grab the little top right corner with my cursor and I drag bigger and smaller. I don't actually type in a number, right? A font size number. But what I do is I type all of my words out together in one text box. Then what I do is I size for the biggest word. So muffins was my longest word. So what I did was I made sure that muffins was going to fit right here. And because I was sizing them together all at once, then everything is going to have the same font size. And that just, you know, it's not mandatory but it's something that looks nice okay then let's center I think I lost the little dot to my eye on this muffins which is okay but I'm just realizing that 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 didn't make it okay there's muffins and then the final two and quiche and because my third one was a little bit scratched, I'm gonna save my smallest word for that. That way, you know, the vinyl isn't necessarily coming into too much contact with it and it'll still lay down on all the flat areas. It really is a minor imperfection, but things to think about. Okay, and then ham. Actually, it might, it might come to contact just a little bit, but in the end, it's just brunch name tags, right? Okay, so there we go. That's our final little idea. Isn't that fun? I really love it. And again, I'll link that font information down below because again, such a favorite of mine. Okay, another super fun craft evening and I am excited that I was able to inspire you with so many things from Dollar Tree for Easter time. Really loved these beautiful gifts. And again, the sixth one you will see in next week's video because I was further inspired. Isn't it funny that I had these for so long in my craft room, you know, a year to be exact, felt completely uninspired. And then this year I was inspired in a couple different ways. So sometimes you just have to sit on craft supplies and that's okay too, right? Okay, I love this Easter sign. It's so cute. Easter bunny stop here, so simple. And I think it turned out really great. Love the little name tags. I also am just loving this little mug. I love it. I'll be using this all year. And I think I'm gonna be putting that on so many things. These little bags turned out so cute and they were so easy to do. Plus, given the size of the little names that you're going to place on these, be sure to shop your little scrap bin for all those tiny pieces of scrap iron on that you trim off of larger pieces because this is a scrap buster for sure. This actually was one of my favorites this evening and it was one of the most simple. I'm definitely gonna go back and get three additional little plaques because I really want to do this three more times and use up the remaining bunnies. Though I do think one of those bunnies on a little card will be cute as well. Be sure to let me know what you would do with those and maybe I'll be inspired to run in another direction as well. I think my favorite this evening was this simple paper bunny. I love the look of it, and I think this is just so fun, so simple, and I just think that the wooden bead paired with the beautiful pink and the soft white background, I just think it's all really working visually together, and I can't wait to decorate with this for Easter time. I love these bags, they're so fun. I love how they turned out, they are so, so cute. And I think they are going to be really, really perfect for getting our little Easter eggs this year. So perfect in the perfect size. 
And then finally, this little egg sign was so simple to do. I love it. We added a fun little bow just to help fill a little bit of that white space. And I really think that that helped. All right, let me know what was your favorite down below. I really enjoyed creating these crafts for you and hopefully inspiring you along the way. Make sure you give this a thumbs up and as always, check out the description box below so that you know all the things I crafted with in case you wanna take a closer look at any of those materials. I can't wait to see you in next week's video. We're going to be continuing crafting for Easter time. And then the week after that, we are going to be doing crafting for spring in general. So lots of fun things coming up. My craft room is an absolute mess because well, that's what happens when you're super inspired, but there's going to be a lot of fun things coming to my craft table and I can't wait to show you. All right, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.